Yep. And with us now, we have Dale Franklin. Good to see you. Good to see you too, sir. You've been QVC a while now, haven't you? Uh, yes, I would think I've been there over eight years now. Oh. I think I'm, yeah, I'm getting into my ninth year next year. How did you arrive here? How did I arrive here? Um, I came through sort of the old system, Graham, where I missed that there was a, an advert, I think, in the stage, and about a thousand or two thousand people applied for it, and there was a big meeting up at a London hotel. But I was on holiday for that, and to cut a long story short, I managed to get into the second round of auditions where I think there was about 500. Right. And then from there, I went through about six auditions. Um, this was, yeah, it was, about, it was over eight years ago. Um, this was, so it started, my first audition was like in the August or September, I think. And then I went right the way through until the new year before I knew I'd got the job. So it was a long, long process. process um, yeah. What well, were you doing actually before QVC? I was before QVC for about two years. I was doing live presentations where you know you have these performance seminars where you'll go to a hotel or whatever. And it's strange enough, I was doing one called uh, How to Be a Confident Presenter. All oh, right. And that's when I first met Claudia Sylvester. Oh. <laughs> she was in the audience with her husband. It wasn't how to be a TV presenter. It was how to stand up in front of the board of directors or how to you know have confidence to even best men would were going, you know, to know, right, yeah. to sort of pick up some tips on how to get that confidence to do it, and uh, that was one of them. There was another one I used to do on, on uh, public relations and how to deal with difficult people, which right. was an interesting <laughs> course. Uh, and that one was packed, as you can imagine. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for about two years, and that was literally going around the country. Um, you know, I could be in Glasgow, Belfast. London a lot, obviously, uh, where, where I saw Claudia. Um, and I'm, it's funny, it, it was brilliant because if you can look at, you know, a hundred pairs of eyes and see the whites of eyes and get an immediate reaction, do they like what you're doing or not? When you then look into the, the shark's eye of a TV camera, <laughs> it's actually not that frightening because when you've seen all those faces before, I mean, sometimes it was a group of 12, sometimes it was 250, and you had to try and keep them alive and stop gossiping on the back row, you know, and keep them involved. And it was a, it was a true test of, of presenting. So, uh, so yeah, so I came from that to this. And before that, I had a proper job. I was mostly in sales. I did a lot of, uh, I was in a state agency for years. Um, I had my own business and I worked for some of the big, the big names. Um, and uh, I met a lot of uh, showbiz types, yeah. you can imagine. <laughs> um, and uh, I did that for a long time, actually. Uh, but I'd always... I'd always kept my hand in, because my, my mum and dad were showbiz, um, so I'd always kept my hand in, I was doing things like hospital radio, I did that for 10 years, oh, right. you know, which was brilliant, because you could make your mistakes yes, there, exactly. and <laughs> sometimes only three people were listening, and, you know, bless them, they might have been in comas or something, and, you know, so you didn't know who your audience were, so you, so you learnt your microphone technique, and you learnt things like that, but it was, it was great, but I used to do the hard stuff as well, we'd go around and get the requests from people who didn't really want to talk to anybody, yeah, and all I've that been there. stuff. Oh, you've done it. There. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brilliant, it's a it great is, thing, and I was... Um, that was with Hospital Radio Way, which was, uh, and still does, broadcast from St. Peter's in Chelsea. Oh, right. So, uh, but they covered about four hospitals. And I used to do, you know, if anybody wanted a, an announcer at a swimming gala for the Cubs or something, I'd, hey, I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> it was just anything, really, to, to, you know, or firework displays if they needed a, a public announcer. It was just a way of getting to do stuff and occasionally work a you know, a, a, a sort of a tiny little radio station shift for, for no money, just to get it on your CV just and all that kind of thing. Just experience. Yeah. So people think, oh, you're lucky doing that job, and I am very lucky to get the job. But I think I did the porridge as well. Yeah, I did the whole craft yeah. before, um, and over, over a number of years, yeah. You presented all sorts of products on QVC. Have you got yeah. a particular favourite? That's a great question, actually. <laughs> um, have I got a particular favourite? I think the, 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 I, you, you tend to have genres that, that are your favourites. Like, today I'm going to be presenting some gems, for example. I actually get into the gems because I like to know where they came from and what makes yeah. them and all the rest of it, which might excite some people and might bore others, but it's kind <laughs> of, you know, it, it, it's just a challenge to find out some of these things, and I love to think of the countries and romance it and so on. Um, but uh, products, I love the technical products, and I'm not a techie, as anybody who watches my shows will know. I'm, I'm not... I'm not, you know, a, a technical wizard, but I love gadgets. I love, I love to know what technology can do for me. Um, so, do I have a, do I have a favourite? Do you know? I honestly don't think I do. I've always been all my life uh, a jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but jack of all trades. I mean, seriously, I love, 
I, you know, my sporting interests, for example, I, I, I love rugby, football, rowing, swimming, anything. You know, I, I'm not just a soccer fan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm a bit like that in life. I, you know, I have. I'll sit down and I can just as happily watch, I don't know, a, a movie as I could watch the Discovery Channel or QVC or anything. I, I really do have a varied wow. interest. Yeah. Um, but it just keeps me on my toes, really. Yeah. So I'm not dodging the question. I genuinely don't. I don't think I have a, a favourite. Favourite. Yeah, I, I've got lots that I like doing. And I mean, and obviously there there are some categories that aren't in my comfort zone, and in a way they're more of a challenge. You know, when I'm asked to sell dolls with Marie Osmond, yeah, that's a challenge for me. Isn't it? You know, um, and uh, it was a challenge for her, I think, because <laughs> <laughs> we, we uh, that was in the States actually. Um, she she done because in the States they're 24 hours. She launched at midnight. They then go live at like. 4 a.m. or whatever, um, and then she had another show at something like 7, and then there was me for 8 o'clock, so she was absolutely shattered, because she'd just been going through the night, and then to find that there was a guy there who had never sold dolls before, no. it was a challenge for both of us, um, but it was great fun, it was great fun. How much preparation do you have to put into a new product, the first, say you see a product for the first time, how much Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, that's something that, that, that sometimes people don't realise, I mean I would have to put so much more effort into selling, say, dolls because I don't know anything about them other than what my daughter likes, you know, yeah. and that isn't necessarily relevant uh, because of her age. Um, you do have to put in a lot more work. I mean, I, I was really disappointed the other day because I'd been off for, for, for three or four weeks with laryngitis and things like that. I had lots of itises. <laughs> Lary laryngitis and pharyngitis were, were two of them. Um, and uh, I wanted, I prepped, as we call it, you know, the um, Nelson show, the, the Trafalgar Celebration. Oh, right, yes. And I put so much effort into to prepping that uh, you know, I watched every program on Nelson. I'd, look, I'd be on the, on the internet, on th you know, the, going to the Maritime Museum and so on. And then I couldn't do it. Simon stood in for me at the last minute, uh, and I was gutted. You yeah. know, so I put a lot of work into that one. Other shows, to be fair, I won't put in a huge amount of work because I've got a good general background in it. So I'll just look at the specifics and see if there's anything unusual there. Um, so literally, I can look at, 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 at the sheet that we call the PAL sheet, there, the product sheet, and I'll say. Yeah, and I might have done them all before. So you, you always have to check. Yeah, well, you've got uh, and things that we have, we always have little reserve items that uh, if something sells out quickly, we might have to go to that. So you always have to make sure you've prepped those prepped well. in case suddenly <laughs> it's, oops, <laughs> what's next, you know. Um, but you do, I'm lucky that I've been here eight years. I've seen a lot of products, but you never can be complacent, which is a good thing, yeah, good thing. you know, so... Well, you say you've been here eight years. Have you plans to stay with QVC or would you like to move into terrestrial television? I, you know, I'm always asked that question. Um, funnily enough, I was I was queuing up at Twickenham just the, uh, on Monday night with uh, with my son, getting autographs of the England players because right. uh, they, were, they were doing a signing thing. And I was queuing up there like everybody else. And this woman came up to me and asked for my autograph, which was totally bizarre. Ah. You know, because I was queuing to get somebody else's autograph, um, and that was lovely. And we said hi. And then another lady came up and said, "My mum wants to know why you don't do other television." And I said, because I love QVC, and she just walked away. And that was <laughs> it. <laughs> smiled and said, oh, and off she went. Um, I don't think you could do this job if you didn't love it. No. I really, not for eight years, because I think it is so demanding. And I think if you didn't, you know, and I, I'd be the first to admit, when I first got the job, I had no, nothing in my mind suggested I'd be here eight years. You know, I just, to me it was a job. It was a, it was a as they would say in the business, it was a great gig. It, it, you know, it was great opportunity for me to actually do my first television, really. Um, uh, you know, and I'll be the first to admit, I didn't know a lot about the, the channel. You know, I soon did. Yeah. Um, but I knew nothing about jewellery. Um, I knew a bit about DIY, because I enjoyed doing that. Um, and I knew about some of the other bits and pieces, but lots I didn't know a thing about. So it was a whole new world to me. And... Uh, and you are always learning, you know, I know that sounds a cliche, but it is true, there's, there's, I never, when I go up to the buyers, and some of the new buyers go, oh, you know everything, you've been there, no way, no. you know, please tell me, because if there's one little story that I learn, that's something extra. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I certainly do, I certainly do enjoy what I'm doing, I, I couldn't stay here. But, you know, QVC is very fair, I mean, if something came along in terrestrial television that, that in no way conflicted with what I do on QVC, they would be quite happy to sit down and talk to me. I mean, they are very, they're very fair employers, and I don't think you could always say that, you know. Um, but obviously, I work four days a week here, which doesn't sound much when you've worked seven <laughs> days in the past, but that's quite a bit, you know, it takes quite a bit of your time, and you do need your downtime. You know, when I've got a couple of days off, 
I do need to recharge the batteries. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so. Who knows what the future holds? But I'm I'm happy here. I've got no plans unless somebody upstairs makes a decision. <laughs> I've got no plans to go. Well, I hope not. It shows, <laughs> it shows on screen that you enjoy the job. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I don't think you could fake that. Not day no, in day out. Not. You might be able to for a day or two, but uh, not for eight years. And whatever you do in the future, we should luck with it. Thanks for talking to yeah, us. No pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.